Hi, how's it going? Welcome to Code with Z. Today's question is lead code number 38, count and say. Now, I want you to know that I'll explain and visualize everything in the coming slides, but for the sake of reading, the question lets you what the question is actually asking us for. So as we can see, here the description vaguely says that the count and say sequence is a sequence of digit strings defined by the recursive formula, and the recursive formula is that the count and say of one is gonna be equal to one, and the count and say of n is going to be equal to the run length encoding of count and say of n minus 1. Now, what does this even mean? Well, let's first of all understand what run length encoding means. As you can see, we're given an example here about run length encoding. Here we have this number here, and the description tells us that we're going to replace 33 with 2 and 3. Why? Well, if we actually check here, we have two occurrences of 3. And this number here is representing the number of occurrences of the number next to it. For example, we have 33, we have two threes, the number three was repeated two times, and that's why we have two here, and this is the number that was repeated. So we have two occurrences of the number three. If we check our other example, here we have 222, right? This was replaced by three and two. Why? Because we have three occurrences of two, and the number itself is two. That's why we get three and two. Then we're going to replace this 5 with 1 and 5 because we have one occurrence of 5. And then we're going to replace this one with 1 and 1 because we have one occurrence of the number 1. Now you get the idea, but this was the example for our run length encoding, not the count and say example itself. If we check the example for our count and say, as I said, this question is a little bit vague. But don't worry, I'll explain and visualize everything in the slides. Here, our input is actually a number like 4, and we gotta return this. Now, why is 4 equal to this number here? I'm glad you asked. Let's break this down. So, why should 4 be equal to this number here? If you remember in the description, it said that the count and say of 1 is gonna be equal to 1. Now, why do we need this? We have 4, not 1 here, right? Correct, but the count and say of 2 is equal to 1 and 1. Why? Because when we actually count the count and say of 2, we're going to look at the previous result and we're going to be like, how many occurrences of this number do we have here? Well, we have one occurrence of the number 1. So, one occurrence of the number 1. Then, we're going to calculate n of 3 and we're going to say n of 3 is going to be equal to, well, let's check our previous answer. Here we have two occurrences of the number 1. So n of 3 is going to be 2, 1. Again, 2 because we have two occurrences of the number 1 and this is the number 1 itself. Now, when we want to calculate n of 4, we're going to be like, all right, let's check the previous answer. We have 2 and 1. We have one occurrence of the number 2 and then one occurrence of the number 1. So n of 4 should be equal to 1, 2, 1, 1. Why? Because we have one occurrence of the number 2 and one occurrence of the number 1. And this is why n equaling to 4 is equal to 1, 2, 1, 1. This is how we solve this problem. For example, if our n is equal to 6, we're going to start from 1 all the way till 6, so we can see what 6 should be actually equal to. Now, we're going to need a function that's going to do this calculation for us, meaning we're going to need a function that's going to tell us how many occurrences of each number we have. And to be honest with you, this is the most important part, because if we check we're literally calling this function over and over again. Each time we're going to be like, how many occurrences of each number do we have? And we're just going to keep on calling it for the next round and the next round. So let's first define this function that's going to calculate how many occurrences of each number we have. All right, so let's say we have a string of numbers and we want to see how many occurrences of each number inside of this string exist. Well, we're going to need a result variable. Do you agree with me? Because we have to return something, right? And because we have a string and we got to see how many occurrences of each number exists in this string, I think we can all agree that we're going to need a loop to loop through each one of these numbers. So we're going to be like, we're going to have an i variable and then we're going to have a loop. This is going to be representing our loop and anything inside of this is going to be inside of this loop. Here we're going to ask ourselves, so what are we doing inside of this loop? Well, we want to count how many occurrences of each number we have. All right then, then let's define a count variable and let's initialize it to 1 because if we have a number, the minimum occurrences it can have is 1, right? And then we're going to be like, if we only had one occurrence of one number, we're going to be like, result should be equal to result 
plus count plus the number itself. Meaning, for example, if we have the number seven, we're gonna be like, we have one occurrence of the number seven, so one here, plus the number seven itself. It makes sense, right? We're saying result should be equal to result plus the count of the occurrence, and next to it, we're gonna have the number itself. This is literally the current number that we're gonna be looping through inside of our loop, and this is the count of that number. So if we have seven, we're gonna be like, we have one here, of seven and then to not get stuck inside of an infinite loop we're gonna be like i plus plus right this makes sense and then at the end we're gonna return our result simple as that now what if we have more than one occurrence of each number because currently we're saying that we only have one occurrence of each number and this is it but what if we have like three sevens next to each other well we gotta count that so we're gonna be like, all right, let's add another loop and this is gonna be a tiny simple loop. We're gonna say we're gonna stay inside of this loop if the current number that we have is equal to the number next to it. For example, if we have two sevens next to each other, that means the current number is equal to the number next to it. So we wanna actually increment our count to make sure that we add the correct count here after we're done with our loop and we want to increment our i, so we make sure that we loop through the numbers correctly. And believe it or not, this is our algorithm. It's that simple. We literally have a result, and then we have this loop, and we're going to be like, all right, we need to calculate our count, so let's define a count variable here, and then we're going to keep on looping inside of this other loop if the current number is equal to the number next to it. If not, we're just going to ignore all of this loop, and we're going to be like, result should be equal to result plus the count of that number, and plus that number itself. Then we're gonna increment i to keep on looping and we're gonna return result. But if you remember, our input was something like four, right? And if we feed four to this algorithm, it's gonna return one four, why? Because we only have one occurrence of the number four. But as you saw in the first slides, this is how we should actually calculate the sequence of our n. Now currently we have this function that's gonna tell us how many occurrence of each number that we have. For example, if we feed this to this function here, meaning if our s was equal to this, this function will return one, two, one, one, because we have one occurrence of two, so one, two, and one occurrence of the number one, so one, one. So all we need to do is to call this function from n equaling to one, all the way till n is equal to the number that we were given. Now, how are we gonna do that? Well, let me show you in the code. Let's code this in the simplest way possible. Alrighty, so first of all, let's define the function that's gonna calculate the number of occurrences of each number inside of our string. So we're gonna call it next sequence, and it's gonna take in a string of numbers, and here we're gonna be like, this is gonna look really similar. We're gonna have a variable called result and this is gonna be initialized to an empty string. Below this we're gonna have a variable called i just like we saw on the slides and this is gonna be initialized to zero. Let me add a space here and then below this we're gonna have a while loop and we're gonna say keep on looping as long as i is smaller than s dot length and then we're gonna enter this loop because we want to keep on looping until we've checked all of the characters inside of our string. So we want to keep on looping as long as i is smaller than the length of our string. Here we're gonna define a variable called count and this is gonna be initialized to one and then we're gonna have our second loop just like we saw on the slides and we're gonna say keep on looping as long as s of i meaning the current character is equal to the character next to it and we wanna keep on looping and increment count and i on each round. But for example, if we're at the last character of our string, we don't wanna check the character next to it because that's gonna be undefined. So here we're gonna be like, we wanna have this condition but we also want to have this condition first check if i plus one is smaller than the s of length meaning first of all check if we're not at the last character because if we are at the last character we don't want to check the character next to it because it's going to be undefined and then below this we're going to be like result should be equal to result plus count plus s of i but if we check we have to return a string here and our count is initialized to a number and the reason it's initialized to a number is because we want to calculate our increments here but at the end we got to return a string so we're going to convert it into a string like so and then we have to have i plus plus here so we don't actually get stuck inside of an infinite loop and then below this we're going to return our result because it's filled with answers now because of our two loops here now this is our next sequence function and now we need to call it properly. Now, what do I mean by properly? Well, if we check here, our n is four and we start calling our count and save function from one and then two and then three and then four. 
And the reason behind it, just like we saw in the slides, is because the answer of this one depends on the previous answer, and the answer of this one depends on the previous one, and this one depends on the previous one. But count and say of one is gonna be always equal to this number. And this was given to us in the question itself. Count and say of one is gonna be equal to the string version of one. So we're gonna use this to our advantage, and we're gonna say, let's define a variable called current sequence. And this is outside of our next sequence function. As you can see, this is our next sequence function. And I'm defining this variable outside of it. And we're going to initialize it to 1. And this is going to be representing count and say of 1. So now we need to call our function here from the very beginning all the way till we reach the number n. So let's do that. We're going to actually define a for loop. We're going to say for let i being equal to 2 because we already have the answer for the first one. As you can see, we have it here. So for let i being equal to 2, we want to keep on looping as long as i is smaller than or equal to n because we want to keep on calculating it until we reach the number n and we want to keep on incrementing i on each round. Here we're going to be like, let's call our function next sequence and we're going to give it the current sequence as the starting string of numbers. Now, what does this mean? Well, as you can see, current sequence is actually equal to the answer of count and say of 1. So here, we're actually feeding this to our function. And when we do, when we feed it the answer of count and say of 1, that's going to give us the answer of count and say of 2, just like we see it here. And then when we get this answer, we have to feed it to our function again. So we can actually get the answer to count and say of 3. And then when we actually get the answer of count and say of 3, we have to feed it to our function again. So we can actually get the answer of count and say of 4. So now, in the first round, we're going to give it the answer of count and say of 1, and this is going to return the answer of count and say of 2. So now we need the answer that this is going to return so we can actually feed it to itself so we can get the next answer. So we're going to be like current sequence should be equal to next sequence. Now each time this returns an answer, it's going to be equal to current sequence, and then we're going to feed it back to itself. And after we've actually reached the number n and we have our answer, then we're going to return our current sequence because it's going to be filled with the answer of the last round. That's going to be the nth round inside of our for loop. Now, let me zoom out. This is all of our code. Let's run it and see if we're going to get accepted. Moment of truth. Yep, as you can see, both of them are passed. Now, let me submit it. Drum roll, please. I'm just kidding. Let's see. Yep. We got accepted. That's awesome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on coding.